hey, grab yourself a cup of tea and come and join us. Remembering this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. So, you know, remind yourself of that. I'm going to rejoice, going to rejoice, be glad in it. And uh, Rob and Lori Evans, who were on the program just a few days ago, I um, hope you saw that, but told about the awful cancer situation that he went through. And uh, we at the station watched him go through it, and it was really hard and all. But they said something on that show. I hope you caught it said that they decided early on that they were going to look for the goodness of the Lord. Wow. Now, there's a couple of things to remember. This is the day he's made. I'm going to rejoice. And I'm going to look for the goodness of the Lord in everything. Boy, if you can get in that mindset, and I think a lot of you would like to. I know I, I want to, and I work at it. Um, something really that could change your life forever and for the for the good. So... Think about that. My guest today is a return guest, Candy Gibbs, and what a wonderful privilege to have her come back. She has a pregnancy center, and we'll talk a little bit about that, introduce you to it, but mostly we want to talk about this brand new book called Release, and you know what? That is talking about when those kids leave home. That's tough. A lot of you know I've done it, and a lot of you that are watching you have. But also, this book will help you do the things you need to do before you release them. Do you ever have kind of mother's guilt and you wish you could do a few things over? Probably so. Uh, she has written a really good book because she sent her children out, launched them out. And um, it's a book whose time has come for sure. Uh, and I'm going to join... Stephanie, we're going to make a southern coleslaw. Now, let me tell you something. There's no in-between on coleslaw. It's really good or it's horrible. There's nothing in between. So we'll put this together. I'll taste it and let you know for sure. You know, when I go to Cheddar's, that's a restaurant around here, I usually order their salmon, and they say, you get two sides. I said, I want two orders of coleslaw because their coleslaw is so good. This is the first time we've done a coleslaw in this show in 20 years, so this is, ta-da, that's a great day. Before I join her, though, he holds my hand. Uh, we've offered this many times by Carol Kent. She dedicated it to her mom, and I'm a bit of a connoisseur of uh, devotionals all my life. I've had them. This one is so excellent. I read it this morning, and it's topical. So each day has a different topic with the scripture to go with it. And if you haven't ordered it yet, I certainly recommend it to you and hope you will. The information's on your screen. You can order it by credit card or you can uh, send a check to Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we'll get it right out to you. Um, you know, we spend money on food for our bodies and we rest and all that. But you need something regularly to feed your spirit. And I thank God for all the good devotionals out there that give you something like that for every day. So I hope you'll take advantage of that. And how are you today? I'm good. I need to read Candy's book. Okay. I'm still dealing with emptiness syndrome uh -huh. and trying to figure it all out and going through my mind if I could do it over again, what, you know, what I would do. And yes, I, I cried. Need... Oh, I don't cried get me going because I will, I will <laughs> cry. <laughs> She's been gone almost a year and I'm still like, I don't know what to do. We'll let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> Candy cried, too. So. Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. But it, it's really a, an important book because some mothers, you know, their life stops there, and that's not God's plan. Mm -mm. Do you like coleslaw? Okay. I was going to say exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. It's either good or it's bad, and you're going to be able to tell as soon as I taste it. <laughs> yes, right? her, her face tells you. She doesn't this, have to say a word. I know. This face does not lie. I'm uh -huh. telling you. Yeah. Okay, so you have, what you're going to mix together is a third of a cup of white sugar, which I kind of went a little bit less because oh, yeah, I don't like a real do, sweet yeah. coleslaw. Yeah, yeah. What are you looking for? I, I want something to um, just a little bit. Okay, to great. Get rid of this. Okay. okay. You have a quarter cup each mm -hmm. of milk and buttermilk. Yes. You have a half a cup of mayo. Mm -hmm. You have a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, mm -hmm. a, ha a teaspoon and a half of apple cider vinegar and lemon juice that I'm going to give you, mm -hmm. a half a teaspoon of garlic, um, I mean, sorry, onion powder, and then salt and pepper. Okay. And then we have two bags of coleslaw 
that we bought, which is so convenient. But if you have cabbage at home, you can cut up some cabbage and, slice and do, um, shred some carrots. Oh, yes, and um, I think it was Lori we were talking, she puts that broccoli slaw in it. That would mm, be very that good. Would be, it's very, I, very crunchy. I love crunch. Mm -hmm. I'm a texture eater. I love mm -hmm. the crunch, so mm -hmm. I, love the, I love this kind of meal. Well, this is side. certainly some interesting ingredients, Yeah. you say that. So you're mixing all the little side ingredients there. I'm getting you some lemon, which... I have seeds in. So, so how was your weekend? See, as we're making this show, it's Monday. It's Monday, and truth be told, my <laughs> back was out all weekend, so I didn't get out of my pajamas because I was in so much pain. Well, I had uh, I had a physical problem. It felt like stress. Wow, we're a we're a bunch of we're, we're pretty bunch. animals, aren't we? <laughs> uh, no, it was, I thought it was kind of like strep throat, but it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. But I did get to watch my boy preach on the internet. That's so great. That is so great, isn't it? He has a good worship team, and yesterday they had a, you know, a congregational prayer for all the prodigals out there, and I mm. was so moved. I was sitting there praying with my hand up, um, thinking of people in our family. Yes. Um, I think sometimes we forget what church is for. Yep. You know? Where it's not to entertain you. No. It's not. And we've gotten to the point where we think we need to be entertained at all times. And, and announced that's next not what week it's they're going to pray for the sick. Mm-hmm. How's that? It's pretty good. Pretty good? <laughs> it's either good or bad. Well, see, I'm not a vinegar person. <laughs> oh, I love vinegar. Um, so this might be good for I me. I would put a little less, but the rest of the ingredients are... Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, let me pour that in and then mix it up and then I'll add the rest. Okay. I don't want to make too big of a mess. Mmm. Yeah, that I love vinegar. That smells really good. And that's apple cider That was vinegar. apple cider vinegar, mm -hmm. which I didn't mention. Apple cider vinegar. Right. All the ingredients will come up on the screen at the end, plus you can get the recipe for free. And so. also, um, she stirs that up. It needs to kind of hang out a little bit. But, oh, yeah, um, put this in the refrigerator and let all yeah. the flavors marry. But we're going to taste it. Yes, we are. So that we can. But, oh, I love a good coleslaw. As it I smells that, good. I always, um, you know, like to take that one restaurant order, too, instead mm -hmm. of getting different. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm afraid to get coleslaw at that <laughs> restaurants because if it's bad, it's just a waste of a side dish. Yes, it is. Sunny's Barbecue is around here, and that's they have excellent coleslaw. Do they have good? Oh, yes, so good. Here you go. Okay. It's very pretty. There's a okay. Let's try this. That's good. Mm -hmm. I love vinegar, though. Yeah. If you like vinegar. The only thing I put a little bit less vinegar I like it. And, and, it's, me, and if it was chilled, it needs to be chilled. It needs to go. And let me tell you. I'm going to put the rest of this you in. You buy that, mm -hmm. uh, and it's got such a mixture of color and everything. Mm -hmm. It's really not. So super simple. And look, this will feed a crowd. It's not worth your time. For nothing. To um, grind all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Delicious. You want it. Yeah, I think you would want this oh, one. I'm a mess. And the recipe's uh, coming up on the screen, and also ways you can order it. If you write to us, do send us a self-addressed envelope with a stamp and otherwise, but email's the best way. And um, so you'll get that information. And if you haven't met Candy Gibbs, you'll want to. Just one reason, because she's so pretty. She is very pretty. Should we make some rules about how pretty they can come here? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we need to establish. <laughs> if that's true, she won't be back, OK? Oh. <laughs> I'm not grandmas. saying a word. I'm not saying a word. Not a word. Okay. Uh, check the information and then you'll make candy if you haven't. And you will love her. We love her. <laughs> if you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you. And please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. I'm so pleased to have Candy Gibbs back on Homekeepers, and she's from Texas, That's and good. when she begins to talk... <laughs> You'll know it. Yes, we will. Um, you know, my husband and I were evangelists, and we drove through Amarillo a lot. I guess 
it was just kind of on the way to a lot of a the lot of churches. places yes, it's it on i-40 so a lot mm -hmm. of people have been through amarillo not a lot of people's hang out for a long time yeah that's right yeah. Uh, have you been there all your life i've been there all my life well you know it well yes it's a great place uh just uh for a couple minutes i want to talk about your ministry uh we call them pregnancy centers right yes and you're there to save lives and help women through difficult times. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing it since 1995. Wow. Our center has been open since 1988. Wow, that, I wonder if you hold a record on that. Well, I know we are one of the first and we are actually one of the largest in the country. Mm -hmm. An average pregnancy center across the country will see about 80 clients every month. Uh, we have three satellites, and we have just added our fourth, and we see about 1,500 people every month. Wow. Yes. How do you explain that except the blessing of God? <laughs> it is the blessing of God. It is the blessing of God, and it is the most beautiful ministry because it is an opportunity for us to uh, minister to widows and orphans in a very real sense, uh, but it also is an opportunity to share Christ. You mentioned that you guys were evangelists mm -hmm. and pregnancy centers across this country share the gospel every day. Yes, uh, they deserve your prayers and your support, that's for sure. Um, on a percentage scale, or you might not even know, but um, how many after going through what you offer would uh, have an abortion? be a very small percentage. I can tell you that a miraculous thing that happened in the pro-life movement was when pregnancy centers began to offer sonograms. Yes. Because when a mom can see, you know, when I'm sitting in a room with a stranger and I have a positive pregnancy test, I have a problem and I'm willing to do anything to escape it. Mm -hmm. But if they will make that short trip down the hall to that sonogram room, and they have a sonogram and they see that that is not a blob of tissue. Mm -hmm. It is a baby and that baby will suck its thumb and dance across that screen. Almost always yeah. they will be willing to consider something mm -hmm. else. And so statistically, if a girl has a sonogram, about 98% of the time she'll change her mind and carry mm -hmm. the baby. Yes, and, and the sonograms now. Oh, I saw goodness. one of my next great grandchild who will be here in a few days. They're 3D. Oh, it looks like a picture. On, a yeah, picture. It, yeah. it does. And, yeah. and she had her uh, hand across her face. I mean, it was just precious. So God bless you. Now. Also, I think this is the best news I've heard in a long time because your center is in a facility that used to be planned parenthood. Yes. And that is another miraculous oh, thing that has happened. Yeah. You know, something that I think is so interesting is pregnancy centers are run off of private local donors mm -hmm. um, and churches that support them. Yes. So very small budgets compared to Planned Parenthood, mm -hmm. who is gaining money from the girls who come in, mm -hmm. but also government support. From the government. Yes. And, and pe President Trump cut that out. Yes, he did. And I am very thankful for that. Uh, but it's amazing what these ministries are able to accomplish yes. because of the favor of the Lord. So, yes, our organization uh, in 2016 purchased the, the building that was Planned Parenthood, and it's phenomenal. Don't we see about 700 girls every month in that building, in that and it is, it is proclaiming life and hope. Yes, and it used to be a death chamber. It did, yes. Uh, so, you know, when you vote, too, you know, got to think about these things. My blood pressure spikes when I think of my money going to Planned Parenthood, my tax dollars. So th thankful for that. And the truth is, a lot of, according to things I'm reading on the Internet and everything, that a lot of them have closed. Oh, Planned a Parenthood lot have of closed. them have closed. Pray that they'll all shut down, okay? Yes. All right, I've got to talk about your book. Okay. I... Um, I read uh, a few of the chapters because I didn't have the whole book, but um, you kind of at the top, you say, I'm not a super mom. No. I'm 
I think we sort of. So have don't to we let... need super moms to write these books? <laughs> no, we do not. I don't think there is a super mom, and I think we need to let ourselves off the hook. Mm -hmm. um, each of us, I, it's not by accident that you end up with the children that you end up with. Mm -hmm. And what the word tells me is that the Lord has prepared good works in advance for me to do. He also tells me in Timothy that I am to guard what has been entrusted to me. Mm -hmm. And my three kiddos have been entrusted to me. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have to be great at everything. I have to be committed to Christ and I have to invest in my kids and that's it. And I think that might be a super mom mm -hmm. actually. Yes, and the, the name of the book is Release and uh, we'll have the website up. You can get it there. I'm sure it'll end up on Amazon and places yes, like that. Yes, exactly. It's brand new. Brand just, new. Uh, they didn't have one to send to me. So. No, this is the first copy yeah. we've given to anyone. I uh, got a synopsis of it on the uh, internet. Mm -hmm. um, how would how would you define a super mom if you're not one? If I'm not one. I think that a super mom is just someone who is intentional and committed to investing in their kids and communicating what it means to serve the Lord. And in our book release, it really is about the relationship between moms and sons. Mm -hmm. And I think it's interesting. I know you have a son and a daughter, and I have two sons and a daughter. And it is a different relationship, mm -hmm. moms and their sons. And preparing to, first of all, you're raising this young man to follow the Lord, to listen to his voice, then to give direction and sort of correct along mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. But the goal is to launch that arrow into the direction that the Lord has called him to go and then to actually follow through and release. So the book is, is really about moms and sons, and I really enjoyed visiting with other moms about their relationship with their boys along the way too. Yes, and I have uh, four great-grandsons and three grandsons, and it is... Um, I don't know there's something kind of special about little boys. We got oh, a lot of them in yeah. our in our family. But also, um, your boys had a strong father as well. Oh man, they did. And really, uh, it definitely is a is a pair. It takes both of us. Both dads and moms contribute specific things into the, the lives of their children. So it is definitely a team effort. And my husband Brian has been pivotal. Uh, in parenting our kids and in the things that we talk about in the book. What do you uh, say about the difference in raising sons and, and a daughter? You know, it's funny because to me it was one, one really pronounced difference is that girls are highly emotional. And they can be extremely emotional, crying, and have no idea why. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would beg, my, please, Maddie, what is wrong? And she would say, I don't know what is wrong. But boys aren't like that. Boys know. I'm either sad, I'm hungry, or mm -hmm. I'm angry, and I know exactly why. So they're a little more black and white. But the other interesting thing about those boys is they will talk much more openly if they're busy. So we can sit across the table from our daughters and talk for hours. But if you want to have a serious conversation with a young man, you need to get active and go for a walk around the block or go throw that baseball in the front mm -hmm. yard because if he's distracted by an activity, he'll, he'll be a little more open with you. Well, that, that's interesting for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, I found that uh, boys navigate with a lot fewer words. Oh, yes. And sometimes you have to draw things out of them. Oh, Did yes. you ever learn how to do that? <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up because on average, women use 21,000 words a day compared to seven for men. <laughs> so it's exactly true. They use very few words. Uh, my boys are thoughtful about what they're going to say, but they use few words to describe mm -hmm. it. So I think the best way to draw it out is really to get out and get active with them and don't make them feel awkward to just kind of sit down and have a long 
conversation. The other thing that I think uh, is interesting, when I asked moms what their biggest concern was in their relationship with their sons as those sons become men, it is that they're not going to continue to stay close and, and communicate well. And I think it is because they use fewer words. So as we prepare to launch our sons into adulthood, one thing that really is important as well is that we don't treat them like babies. We treat them with respect and we treat them like young like men. Like young men. That's right. And as they become men, they're going to be more comfortable in their relationship with us if they don't feel babied. Yes, uh, any young mothers listening to this, I, I hope you uh, really pay attention because I have great grandchildren now, so you kind of figure out where I am in life. And, and I look back and my kids are wonderful. They married the right people. I think that's huge. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. Uh, they love the Lord and their kids all went to Christian school or they were homeschooled Christian. All those things, uh, my heart explodes with gratitude. But this is what I want you all to know, that when you look back, you look at what you could have done oh, yeah. better. Exactly. Now, don't think I lay in bed and cry and carry on, but um, those years are so precious, and I think you've done a good job of telling them that. Yeah. Don't let them slide by. No. And don't let other things, and I was always in the ministry, and it's um, so easy to put that ministry out there. Uh, but there's nothing more important than your family. There's, there's no church, there's no group, anything that's more important than that. And the time is fleeting. Yes. When you have those babies and you bring them home, 18, 19, 20 years nothing. seems like it's going to be mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. And you don't turn around twice mm -hmm. before you're taking them to school or they're getting married. And so don't take any of it for granted. Mm -hmm. Even the difficult days when the milk gets spilled or the dog isn't fed, all of those, the good, the bad, it all makes for a beautiful story, but it doesn't take long to write it. So be on purpose. Right. Yeah. I saw something, I think it was on the internet, where it was kind of a cartoon appearing, uh, where a kid had, a little kid had spilt some milk, and the message was, it's easy to, to uh, wipe up milk, oh, yeah. but a broken spirit. Don't scream at a kid for doing something milk simple. Milk. That's right. Okay, uh, you had no no boys in your family growing up. No, I just have one you sister. You had no experience. No, I had no experience. And when Brian and I married, he had Tanner, my oldest son, from a previous marriage, and mm -hmm. Tanner was five. And he didn't know what to do with me, and I didn't know what to do with him. But we <laughs> learned a lot. I mean, and you're a bride. <laughs> oh my gosh! And so I learned really, I, I just got, I, dumped, I jumped into the deep end with mm -hmm. that little five-year-old boy, but I adore him. His personality is very different from my firstborn son, Jake, mm -hmm. uh, but they have been a delight. Mm -hmm. And the relationship between moms and sons is very, very precious. It is. Um, if you just joined us, my guest is Candy Gibbs. The name of the book is Release. Uh, website will be on the screen. You can get it there. And um, she starts out the book saying, I'm not a super mom. And that's just the kind of person that should write a book. Oh, I, I think so. Thank you. Okay. Um, you write in there, we're afraid of our children. Mm. I am amazed how often, um, as an executive director of the Pregnancy Center, mm -hmm. we work with families and moms every day. And you would be surprised how many parents parent um, out of a fear of their child's response. So for example, a, a mom or a dad might know that the best thing to do is to take away that cell phone, mm -hmm. but they don't do it out of fear of what their child is mm -hmm. going to do. Yeah. Well, that's blackmail. It is. And you You're should right. not be blackmailed by your child. Mm -hmm. You're parenting based on what the Lord is directing you to do for mm -hmm. your family. And you shouldn't be governed or blackmailed by how that kiddo might respond. Yes, don't forget. Don't be afraid of your children. No. They're, they're just not going to like you at times. Uh, that's right. And that's okay. And that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we're going to run out of time, but um, do not parent on how you think they're going to respond. That's right. And, and that's the fear thing. That's the fear thing. And also don't parent based off of what your friend or your neighbor is doing. Mm -hmm. 
Parenting is a form of worship. You are doing what the Lord is convicting you to do for your family. It doesn't matter what everyone Mm -hmm. else is doing. So don't be afraid and don't feel pressured by your friends because this is your one chance with these kiddos and it goes by fast. That's right. And the most important thing you'll ever do. Uh, And uh, don't worry about what others think. No. Or don't worry about messing up. That's right. You have been equipped. The Lord has called you, equipped you to raise overcomers, not just kids that eat by these Mm -hmm. teenage years and barely make it out alive, but you are raising kids with influence and impact. Mm -hmm. And they're not supposed to be influenced by their peers. They're supposed to be doing the influence. Mm -hmm. So I am all for aggressive, fearless parenting. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, you don't worry what the kid thinks or what your friends think or exactly. anybody else is watching. Only the Lord. Okay, I want to go through these. Uh, we're almost out of time, but I'm going to read them off, and if you zero in on the one you want. Okay. You say, we're guardians of their dreams, mm. carriers of their hopes. You're the mentor, and um, you uh, gave him life. You are a mirror. You are a protector. Oh, yes. All, all the way... You've really captured, I believe, what God had in mind for parenting. I I think the one that I would key in on the most is that you're a mirror. And you have to reflect to those children, your sons and your daughters, who you know that God has called them to be. And you have to call it out in them. You have to foster those giftings and abilities in them. And you have to believe it in them until they're able to believe it in themselves. And don't you think when you zero in on that one thing, God is going to show you. Oh, yeah. That, uh, I think that would be an easy part of knowing if you are depending on the Lord at all. Oh, my At goodness. all. Yes. That he's, he's going to show you things about that child that no one else would ever know. Exactly. Exactly. And you have to begin to present it to your children and encourage that in them. Yes. Now you make me want to do my parenting all over again. <laughs> you did a great job. <laughs> but um, really, I uh, um, this is what Homekeepers is all about. This is what this program is all about. And I'm so thankful for a guest like this who will write a book like this that could be a real blessing to you. And uh, grandmothers, buy them for those children and, and your granddaughters who are getting married and having babies. Uh, we need to impart all this wonderful information, send it on to the next generation. Please join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. None. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers.